Football Twitter has blessed us with so many phenomenal, glorious moments over the years. I just thought, you know what would be a good idea? If Christoph and I try to round up all the best moments from the years and make a nice little tier list so we can rank them all from football heritage to, oh yeah, that happened. I think we should get things started with an absolute classic. He's 28 until he's 29. <laughs> this is just peak football Twitter. It is two grown men posing as a meerkat from an advert <laughs> and an old photo of, uh, who actually is that? I can't tell. They just keep saying the same point over and over, like the argument doesn't develop. It's just the same thing being repeated with more insults. I think that has to go in football heritage. I know it's early, go but on I then. think that has to stay there. If that doesn't make it into the top tier, then what does? Thomas Party's long shots? <laughs> when World War Three was rumoured to become a thing, football Twitter just took it and ran. There's no, I can't think of one in particular. I'm sure we'll be able to find some. I'll use this one as an example. I've got it on the screen now. Ozil things during World War Three, showing the troops for Ozil highlights versus Ludo <laughs> I've just realised it was a Zill thing to actually tweeted that to you. <laughs> World War Three. What do we reckon? Top top moment. <laughs> Vaguely memorable. It was okay. I feel like the recency bias probably affects that one. This next one, Adam Johnson. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Do you know what the best part is? I took this screenshot the other day. The tweet is still up. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the tweet. It's just obviously in hindsight, it doesn't look great. You would have thought they'd take it down. Was this the first footballing nonsense incident? I mean, nonsense goes back many years. In football Twitter terms, definitely the most high profile one. <laughs> then Gilfie Sigurdsson said, hold my beer. I would say in the middle for that one. I'm happy to put that in vaguely memorable. I'm going to bring out the big dogs early. It's Rebecca Vardy. There she is. <laughs> We've got a nice photo of Colleen there. What an incredible day that was. Like, that was a well well thought out investigation. She'd done her research, you know. I would say vaguely memorable. Do we do it? Do we go for the big boy this early? I think you know what I mean. I don't know if I do. Let's just do it. It's what the people are here for. <laughs> It's the way he wears the hat that gets me the most, actually, out of that photo. Oh my god, what a day. I feel like this was on, might have been Christmas Eve, or like, it was sometime around Christmas Day. Because I remember just being on holiday and like, being like, sorry to the family, I have to sit here on my phone for the entire evening to see what else his girlfriend tweets from his account. You can tell that Nasri's people had got onto his Twitter, and they were like, deleting tweets at the same time she was tweeting them. That night tarnished Nasri's reputation for years. Oh yeah, 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 he'll never be remembered for anything other than that. I think just the sheer amount of time it took to get her off the account was pretty impressive about it. She was on it for like a good couple of hours maybe? I think that has to be in football heritage. No argument there, that is yes. football heritage right there. Does Bateson versus Carrick fan mean anything to you? All I remember is them having an argument but I remember there being a lot more to it. All I remember is Bateson beefing some guy with a disability. I can't remember too much about it but I'm going to. Keem I made a drama alert about it once. It started with Bateson saying, FT have been triggered. Carrick fan responding, triggered like your sweaty bald head. Bateson is bald. Bateson responded with, I don't know why your parents allow you to use the internet with your condition. Must be a scary place for you. Carrick responding, oh the irony. Got any kids to sell your ultimate team coins, you f Mug. I don't remember it being this bad. That for me is quite spectacular because it was so funny. Either that or again vaguely memorable because we can't really remember the details very well. Yeah, but maybe I, vaguely memorable it, probably literally sums that up. But yeah, this one I didn't even know about until the other day. It's, it's a bit of an error from, I'm assuming, Victor and Ichibi's social media <laughs> team. It's just funny when like social media teams f*** up and make mistakes. I reckon Victor and Ichibi's probably, oh yeah that happened or nasal exhale. I think, oh yeah that happened. Now this is quite a niche one. Do you ever remember? Remember Harry posing after getting a West Ham season ticket while wearing a Chelsea shirt, making the hammer sign with a in the background. I don't know if this is common knowledge, I think it is. West Ham had to have a meeting to discuss what they were gonna do about Harry. They actually called a meeting and discussed like what to do about this public pest that was Harry at the time. I thought there was a fairly good chance he'd get beaten up after tweeting that, but You've got to respect it at the same time. I feel like that's probably quite a niche one, but still, still spectacular. I would put that as nasal exhale. It's very funny, but fairly niche. This next one. <laughs> 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 oh, I totally forgot about this. You've got to show the news reporter reading it out though. It's relax, I'm back chilled. Just battered the wife. Feel better now. 
So was this real or fake in the end? No, it was real. He played table tennis against her and that's what the tweet was about. It's so much funnier out of context. It was just because it was just after he'd got the job as like the uh, women's England manager. And uh, then all these old tweets resurfaced and you know what? There's another one that I'm going to try and find for you quickly. There's no interpreting that the wrong way, surely. It's not a good look, is it? I reckon that should go quite spectacular. I don't know. I mean, we're running out of space in Vaguely Memorable. We can put it in Vaguely Memorable. This wasn't huge on football Twitter, but I just want as many people to see it as possible, really. Garnosaurus, pedophile, plays <laughs> with little children, takes him to the Emirates to sexually abuse him. Gamosaurus didn't die for this. He just rolls with it. He doesn't He doesn't kick off, uh, which would have been really funny to see a man in a dinosaur costume try and fight a fan. <laughs> it's just the disappointed look which suggests that he's had those things chanted at him before. This isn't his first rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> I think nasal exhale, personally. The ESL. I think that trumps any day. That's when full Twitter peaked. Honestly, that was three days where nobody was doing anything other than refreshing Twitter. It almost felt fake because of how ridiculous it all was. The only thing that's ridiculous is how ridiculous it all is. <laughs> was that actually a really good Nick Frost impression? If you want a lot more detail on the ESL moments, then there's a video you should watch on this channel. Please consider doing that if you haven't already. I think that has to go in the toppest of the top tier for me. That is 100% football heritage right there. Do you want to throw in another suggestion? I will throw in any one of Wayne Rooney's tweets over the years would do. I have Wayne Rooney discovers Twitter as, as an entire thing. <laughs> Looking very caveman uh, just saying that photo. I actually do have a couple of these saved because it's so special I thought we have to go through them. It is one of the most iconic ones. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> if someone asked me like what is the most iconic tweet of Twitter in the whole history of that platform, I would say that. When he threatened himself. <laughs> He's so rent free in his own head. And then surely there's Rio do you want picking up in the morning, pal? Yeah, pal. don't worry. Obviously that's there. <laughs> 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 Why not? No, it feels like quite recently they had a hair transplant, not 2011. That's I know what you mean, ago. actually, yeah. Was it really 10 years ago? Yeah, Rooney discovering Twitter, surely that's got to be right at the top as well. I think that could be football heritage. It was almost the inspiration for this video, Yeah. so I'm putting him right up there. The pioneer if you will, of football Twitter. I'm just gonna put this one on and see what you think. Oh, yeah. I feel like it wasn't huge at the time, but over time, it's been recycled a lot on football Twitter. Like the fact he gave the team talk saying, this does not f slip here, and then immediately slips to allow them the bathroom. It just puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? Maybe vaguely memorable. So next up, I have Robert Hooth playing cock or no cock. Okay, so Robert Hooth decided to play a gender guessing game where they show raunchy pictures of people, and then you guess if they have a penis or not, and he decided to tweet about this on Twitter. I like how he gets a bit of creativity. I know, I know, he's creative, you know, like he's, he's a real story writer. Possibly not <laughs> the, the best way to channel his art, though. How do you not realise that this is a bad thing to do at the time. That's why I love Twitter, you know, it just gives us an insight into these footballers' lives and personalities that otherwise you wouldn't get. For me, that is right up there. Do you think we have our first quite spectacular I think there? this should be quite spectacular, just because it's such a f up that it's incredible. I feel like this one's fairly niche. Images you can hear. This is about Spurs, right? Wait, can we watch the clip? By Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. Uh, <laughs> The idea that the language barrier hasn't stopped him from gaining this knowledge about the history of Tottenham Hotspur. Spursy has gone global. <laughs> I feel like it's quite niche. Obviously, Arsenal fans will appreciate that more yeah. than most. I would say nasal exhale for that one. Yeah, it gets a chuckle every time it gets posted. Another man who possibly could have had a whole video about him, Michael Owen and his tweets. I've got the one that says, just run over a rabbit, devastated. Yeah. There's also another one that I'd never seen before. He's doing a Q&A and someone replies back at Michael Owen, thought yours would be injured or bench and he replies hilarious when your picture has a big roll of fat hanging over your shorts <laughs> had a successful life have you peasant oh dear me the other one is um when he went for a run and started taking photos of wildlife oh, and then one of them was just one. a dead ferret <laughs> and he like poses by it i'm just looking at it now it just gets better the longer you look <laughs> I'm grouping all of the Michael Owen tweets into this one here. I think vaguely memorable. Yeah, I don't think it quite breaks into the squad. Uh, quite spectacular. No. Uh, this is quite a recent one. Oh, yeah. When Spurs got beaten 3-0 by Dynamo Zagreb after having a two-goal cushion, and they lost 3-0 to get knocked out. Yeah, knocked out like the quarterfinals of the Euro Tour. Like, it was quite far into the competition as well. Joe Hartwell goes and puts that on Instagram. I think he said it was a social media team or something. I feel like that one's a, oh, yeah, that happened, but... 
but it was funny for a bit. Yeah, no, I think, oh yeah, that happened. Spurs are quickly taking up quite a lot of the places here. Now I have another one, which is Jolien Lescott tweeting a picture of his car from his pocket. Don't you worry, <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. So this was after Aston Villa lost, and then literally right after the game, he tweets a picture of his very nice car and claimed that it got tweeted from his pocket without his input. This was uh, just after I think they'd lost 6-1. They were on the way down, like they were pretty much going to get relegated. And uh, Jolene Lescott, their captain, <laughs> straight after the game, posts this. I think that's got to be quite spectacular. I think that's quite spectacular. More the fact that he committed to the story that it got tweeted from his pocket. I've got the Spurs DVD. Uh, I think this one is actually an edit. I was going to say, there's no way they made a DVD saying we put the pressure on. I'd say, oh yeah, that happened. So I think it's a very Arsenal Twitter. You know, I think we're, we're sort of bubbled with that. I've got something similar to that. I'll just throw it in. It was when they made the uh, Carabao Cup finalist smirch. I have never seen that before. How have you not seen this? This was quite big at the time. That's not even a Spurs. That's just a terrible business decision. I would say, yeah, that happened purely because I haven't seen it. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. I don't know if you were aware of this, but did you ever see the Oli Merz Selfridges tweets. Oli Merz is shopping in Selfridges, right? The first tweet we see is, everyone get out of Selfridges now, gunshots, I'm inside. Really not sure what's happened. I'm in the back office, but people screaming and running towards exit. Evacuating store now, heart is pounding. Another two minutes, being told no shots in Selfridges, have no idea the whole store went crazy. Then I'm safe in hotel with loads of people. So many different stories flying around, just hope everyone is safe. And then Selfridges tweeted, Selfridges London was evacuated today as a precautionary measure. We have been working with Met Police and confirmed that there were no reported incidents in store. So basically, nothing happened except Oli Merz tweeted that there was a mass shooting going on in Selfridges. But then this escalated. Okay, so basically, Piers Morgan tweets, stop tweeting, mate, at Oli Official, nothing happened. Oli Merz says, listen, Piers, I was shopping, then all of a sudden the whole place went mad. Da -da -da. If you were there, you'd have understood, mate. Piers Morgan replied, no, you listen, Oli, when you have millions of followers, be very careful what you tweet. There were no shots. In fact, nothing happened at all. So you stood extra needless panic by tweeting false information. Then, James Blunt tweets from the man who published fake Iraqi torture pictures, lol. Tony Cruz then likes that, and so Piers tweets, you stay out of this at Tony Cruz if you know what's good for you. Then Colo Torre tweets, shut the f up. That was just an iconic series of events for me. Although I think it might have been a fake Colo Torre, but let's not let the truth get in the way of a good story. Let's throw Ollie Murs in there. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you reckon we put the uh, the Selfridges incident? Maybe memorable, because it was good. Right, I'm going to throw this one in there. It's probably not one of the bigger ones, but I kind of just wanted to include it. It was Piers Morgan detailing his reaction to Thierry Henry leaving Arsenal. It's probably one of the, oh yeah, that happens, but... Just wanted people to see that, really. Basically saying that he was grieving like he would for a lost loved one for a footballer moving clubs. Well, let's just put that down there. Did you ever see the stories about a River Plate fan got a QR code tattooed on them that shows the Copa Libertadores final goals against Boca Juniors so you know yeah. last minute winner whenever you scan it with your phone it comes up with a YouTube video and you know like all of these football accounts are you know Argentinian football another world I don't know like how amazing is that and then football Twitter got wind of it and uh, club together to go and report the video for copyright infringement <laughs> just to ruin this man's tattoo <laughs> the video then got taken down now this man's tattoo leads through to nothing People can't say that Football Twitter don't come together to do great things. Yeah, Football Twitter's great at coming together for the greater evil rather than the greater good. Yeah, very true. And where should we put it? Yeah, I'd probably say vaguely memorable again. Gonna throw this in. Again, probably not a massive moment. <laughs> the Marcus Rojo toast incident. <laughs> this. Wait, so I'm assuming the funny part about it is just how burnt the toast is. Yeah, it's just it's just an innocent photo that you put on like Twitter or Instagram and obviously the only thing That's anyone spoke about is the, is the absolute state of that toast. <laughs> the toast? What has he done to the poor toast? That's an abomination. I just wanted to bring this one back up again. Don't think it's a massive moment, but uh, I think nasal exhale for that one. Yeah. Next, a blast from the past. <laughs> Need I say more? Look at the size of his forehead, it's amazing. I want to put this in quite spectacular because for years, like this is such an old one, but for years it was referenced and still is every I now and again. I think quite spectacular, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Another classic 
footballer discovers Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know this. There are, there are more old Wanyama tweets that are really yeah. good. When he watched Paranormal Activity and it was too scary for him, so he had to throw it in the bin. Nasal exhale for me. I don't even know if I should show this because it's literally just going to be blurred without context, but I think we just have to anyway because it's quite glorious. <laughs> Oh, Emmanuel. It's, it's so innocent, but so bad. It's just so obvious that football Twitter has responded to this all in unison. If Abue was a footballer these days, he would be the best footballer for an out-of-context Abue account. It would bang so hard. There's so many weird things that this man did back in the day. And even me, aged like 10, 15, I was like, this man's weird. I think that has to be... Nasal or vaguely memorable. Let's put it in nasal so you don't have to redo the list again. So, on to the final moment that I have for us. I think we've covered just about everything. I think you're gonna particularly appreciate this. It's the Richard Keys, she and I. They enjoyed some banter together. Oh my god, I forgot about that. That was huge for a while, actually. That was massive as memes go, to be fair, for a while. Right, the, the memes were instant. Do you reckon they're quite spectacular That's there? quite spectacular. There's a special place in my heart for Richard Keyes and his banter quotes. But with the arrival of Richard Keyes, that's all that I have, and I think all that Chris has for, for today. There are a lot more moments out there, but... Uh... Please share them with us, because this has been some of the most fun I've had in ages going back through old ridiculous football Twitter tweets, so please let us know any ones that we've missed out on. Massive thank you again to all of the replies on Chris's tweet that, that gave us the inspiration for some of these that we haven't thought of. This is a combined effort, I feel. This is probably the most successful group project that I've ever been involved in. Yeah, and they didn't even know that they were being involved in a group project. It's just unpaid labour, the best kind. A massive thank you again to Chris for joining me and helping me make this list. Chris has been involved in football Twitter longer than I have. I actually had to go through and delete old tweets on my account. Someone sent me a spreadsheet of old tweets from my account that were like, Hope Van Persie gets run over by a bus twice and and traitorish. Uh, but yeah, thank you again to you lot for watching. And uh, apart from that, I guess we'll see you again soon.